That, of course, is a Jalen Milrow, the Alabama quarterback. Take you ready for Michigan in the Rose Bowl. Yes, uh, uh, coming up this weekend as they uh, <laughs> vie for the college football championship. But I'm not showing this for no reason. I'm showing it to you because I love when uh, players come out and attack coaches who are critical of them. In this case, Jalen Miro talked about the advice he once got from embattled offensive coordinator of the New England Patriots, Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien said, you suck, you can't play quarterback, play wide receiver, and now he's uh, has a chance to win a national championship. And Bill O'Brien's all three, one of the worst offenses <laughs> in all of football. So did you guys ever have that? Where a coach oh, is yeah. like, maybe wide receiver's not for you? Yeah, I didn't have it where it was maybe wide receiver's not for me, but my first year in the National Football League, I had my offensive coordinator come up to me in team dining and say, uh, you know you're here because of your wide receiver coach. He vouched for you. I didn't want you here. And that really? was Jeff Jagosinski. Oh, Jags. What's yeah. up, Jags? Jags yeah. What's up now, Jags? Yeah. yeah, and look how that turned out. He yeah. was out of there after that year. Yeah. We were 8-8. Eight and eight. Jeff, out of there. Jags. Oh, Bring man. somebody else in there. Mike, please call the plays for us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my career turned out pretty decent. Not bad. You're a Green Bay Packer Hall of Famer. Did anyone say to you, why are you here? Uh, No. Not at all. Nobody said that. Nobody said that. No. It, it, didn't, it didn't happen. And now, listen, I, I credit the young man first of all, man, because it does take a lot of guts up there and not just make it about you, but just talk about your story and be honest yeah. about it, man. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot more of those stories than you would ever yeah, even yeah. think about or know. By about. the way, turn on the game against him, him versus Auburn, that last drive, Woo! money. Yeah. Like, he was on fire. So the kids has a bright future. Hopefully he gets it done in the playoffs. Uh, Michigan favored by a point and a half in the Rose Bowl, which is on Monday. And by the way, speaking of Monday, we're going to be here live on New Year's Day because there's tons of NFL football, of course, getting ready for the uh, uh, college football championship yes, as well. Be. Sorry? What? Huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we, we will said? all be here <laughs> on, on Monday. <laughs> New Year's Day. Yeah. Look, you got Christmas. You don't get New Year's Day. <laughs> Bring it all back, Greg. All right, let's go to first of football and back to the NFL with Jacoby. Yeah, and, and I'm with him on that as well. I, I thought Patrick Cream was talking about San Francisco because that's the team they just manhandled and embarrassed on national yeah. TV. I know a lot of people wanted to then take those comments and throw them at Miami Correct. because of the style of offense that Miami runs. But I did a little research today. Go ahead. Oh, Cause just because Mike McDaniel said something don't mean I got to go with it. <laughs> you got to do your own research, yes, right? Do. do your homework. Which is why I encourage kids out there to learn how to read. Uh, right? And that being the case, I've got stats for you. Hey! hey we got graphics. Hey, give it to them. Graphics. Give me my full screen. Yeah! There you go. All right, so the top three numbers are their offense uh, running attack. Top five in all three, right? The bottom two are them defensively. They stop the run very well, and they run it very well. Ain't nothing cute about that. Yeah, but I love how this game has a theme, right? It's finesse versus physical. The Dolphins have never seen an outfit like the Baltimore Ravens on defense. That's the bottom line. They are a pretty offense. They have the most. They gave up 30 ones. points to the Rams two but, weeks ago. And they won the game. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that, that's how that goes. But at the end of the day, man, you talk about the, one of the best linebacker duels in the game between McQueen and, 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 and Raekwon Smith. You talk about that front. You talk about that back end. They yeah. get after it. They, Mike McDonald does a hell of a job of scheming guys up. The, ra- the, the guy Dolphins from the Doobie Brothers? Tr- Listen. <laughs> the, Dolphins, the Dolphins are in trouble, man. The Dolphins are in trouble. I don't oh, think stop, you realize. Stop, They're going to beat the hell out the Dolphins. Maybe they will. But I here's Mike. Like backyard, Kimbo. <laughs> Slice, in the face, oh, coming out the door with the chain. This is going to be a bloody game. For uh, here, here's my query, then, big guy. My query is, who is stopping Tyree Kill? Because you know, you know, you know, he's unguardable. Yeah, but that's one guy, and Waddle's out with an ankle, and two is not scrambling. By the way, he will be scrambling for his life. So at the end of the day, say what you want. This is gonna be like blood sport, like Van Dam and Bolo Young. This is gonna get hot. It's gonna get real hot. It's already hot. Yeah. I'm excited for this matchup because the Dolphins, for whatever reason, and not for whatever reason, they optically they have been cute. Yeah, they've been like, cute. Yeah, they it is what it is. Yeah. But they they right, do he most play. Have scored 21 touchdowns no, this year. I, I, I know, but no one paid but this attention was, to that. But I, great. This also was like a it wasn't like a power eye no. downhill like with a full back. It was gadgets and whips and speedos and all like it's pretty. This is called, it's okay to be pretty. I agree. pretty yeah, I agree. And and what I what I love about what Patrick Queen said, regardless if he was talking about uh, the San Francisco 49ers, yeah. because they were highly doubted going over to the Bay. <laughs> they were five and a half point underdogs. They were underdogs. So he was talking about them. 
However, it applies to anyone they play. And so mm-hmm. what he's saying is, I don't care who we play, what they look like, the motions, all the things. If you if you're on the football field, you don't get it. We're going to we're going to put a helmet through your chest. There you go. Like, that's just the mentality. It's called we football, don't think Craig. That, I, I got we you. Don't think, <laughs> we don't think of the Miami Dolphins that yeah. way. The Baltimore no. Ravens say it, and it's like, oh yeah, we. Yeah, but all right. So let me just play devil's advocate. What, what McDaniel's saying is, I don't care what you say about us or what you think you Correct. see. I'll give you the numbers. And the numbers are, let's just start with their defense, which has been somewhat maligned in comparison to their offense. They're top five against the run. That's manhood right there. Yeah, and, and also, while you might say, sorry, go ahead. that the style of running is not that smash mouth in between the tackles, let's get dirty, you know, three yards in a cloud right. of dust. Mm-hmm. They still a top five rushing offense. I give you that, but I also turned on the, the, the tape against the Titans with Derrick Henry went crazy against them, right? Yeah. Like, so listen, at the end of the day, you gotta give the Dolphins credit. They rushed the ball really well, and they had, as of late, been able to stop the run. But this is a totally different team. The Baltimore Ravens take pride in taking your soul. Two is not prepared for this game. He has not been able to scramble all year because he wasn't been forced to. He will be forced to get out the pocket and run. You see what happened to Brock Purdy. They got Brock Purdy off his spot and he became a very average quarterback. This is why this matchup is so much fun and why I think the cute word does apply to the Dolphins. When you think about it, one word comes to mind for each of these teams. Ravens, physical, Dolphins, speed. And when you talk about those numbers, those numbers, when Mostert does have all those touchdowns, but he breaks long runs, which makes their averages high. But you look at Mike McDaniel. He has the Gucci shades on the sideline. He's the cute. fresh stickers. He's a cute little coach. <laughs> little guy. Right? He's yeah. the cuteness yeah. all around Miami. He has his pants up around his calves. <laughs> right. game. If you believe for one second that the Baltimore Ravens aren't thinking about that and they're not mindful of that and that the Dolphins aren't thinking I'm about sure that they are. and they are mindful of that, understanding that, look, this team can be who they were, who they are, who they say they are, but we are bringing a different outfit to the table as well. So that trap. It's going to be a great match. They're going to be at home, yeah. so don't matter. Moving on, second and football. Craig, uh, two questions here. Number one, what do you think about him just flat out talking trash before the game? And number two, how important is it for the Chiefs to play well on both sides of the ball for them to sort of get back? Yeah, oh, look, the Chiefs are a problem, but they're better than the Cincinnati Bengals <laughs> with Jake Browning as quarterback. But I love it because he, he talks the talk and walks the walk. Yeah, sure. Obviously, he had a bad shoulder, so he's been out for a little bit. But the fact that he's going to be on the field in this game and he don't give a rat's ass who's playing for the Kansas City Chiefs, he's basically calling them out. He's challenging Kansas exactly. City to play him man Let's to man. Go. And they won't. Now, here's the deal. Just because you, just cause you <laughs> asked for exactly. it, don't mean they're going to give it to him. Exactly. Uh, but that's he, the whole. he wants, he's dying for man to man That is all this is about. Like, the one thing as a receiver that you want is I just want to be able to match up against one you one on one. Mono we mono. Are you better than me? You can't be. This is, this is brilliant. Like, everybody's going to be like, oh, he's talking. No, he's trying to convince Spagnolia or, and or Sneed McDuffie to say, I got hey, him. coach, let me take him. That's what he wants. That's all he wants. Yeah. Want. Yeah. He doesn't care about Spagnola. He wants one of those two cornerbacks to beg Spagnola. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Let me have him. Let me have him. But you finally came around, Greg, <laughs> and you just admitted what I've been saying on this show for over a year now. We both love that man-on-man action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got him. Woo! When it wow. comes to matchups yeah. on the field, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, don't want no, I don't want a two-on-one. I can't handle no, a two-on-one. I Maybe Young and Craig. Young and Craig, too. <laughs> uh, <Not. laughs> and, but I, that's exactly what he's doing. And look, while the Kansas City Chiefs are obviously going to win the West and have one home playoff game, that's probably about it. You know, the Bengals – are still one of those teams right there on the fringe, on the outside looking in. So it's still a big game for them. Kansas City, it's more about it's a get good game. Mm-hmm. Right? Get good. Get right game. Get right game. Get good, baby. Right no, we voted on that already. We, <laughs> all said good. Good. we voted for him. Get good. Yeah, it's a get good game out of fear. Yeah. It's a get good game. <laughs> and I think Kansas City is in a similar spot where the Bengals are playing for their lives to get into the postseason. Kansas City's playing to try to figure out how we can get good going into the postseason. Yeah, I think this is a must win for the Chiefs from a morale standpoint. You got punched in the mouth in the second half of that Raiders game. I'm talking about Adrian O'Connor didn't pass the ball. It was down there running mm. at home in your turf. And the only thing we saw from that sideline was a bunch of pissed off football players throwing helmets, right? They got to get on the right side of before they make get into this playoff. Because the Bengals are going to be the Bengals, right? They, they are who they are at this point. They'll figure it out. If they don't, then they're going home. But the Chiefs right now, if we expect them to be where they need to be, they got to play a better brand of football. Can I be honest? I'm rooting for the Cincinnati Bengals in this game. Oh, okay. 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 
as Who you knows? know, they're very close to Kentucky, and I love Kentucky. Yeah. But I'd also like to see Kansas City suffer some more. I, I want to see some more Hollis I want to see some anger. Some more. I want to see yeah. Andy yeah. Reid get mad. I want, yeah. I want to see some turmoil. I want all that turmoil. stuff. Hey, we're very excited because not only are we working on New Year's Day, so you can set your uh, – I was going to say TiVo, but that makes me so old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Damn, set your TiVo. You want to say your grandfather clock. I said it. Uh, if you have uh, your Betamax uh, your set <laughs> or your VCR <laughs> set for, uh, for Monday, <laughs> we'll be here. Greg won't. But we'll be here. We'll be here Monday at, at our normal hours. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest – bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.